How high can Athena go this cycle? Now today we have another price prediction video because you guys seem to love them so I will keep them coming and today we will look at Athena looking at the fundamentals, the tokenomics, the vesting, the airdrop and more before finally giving those price predictions. Now if you do enjoy the video please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel but let's get started with an overview of what Athena actually is. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this BitGet article here just to get a quick understanding of what Athena is. And the top paragraph states that Athena is a synthetic dollar protocol developed on the Ethereum blockchain. It offers a new breed of stablecoin called USDE. And unlike traditional stablecoins like USDC or USDT, USDE is not pegged to fiat currencies. Instead, it is a synthetic dollar collateralized with crypto assets and short futures positions. So this unique approach enables Athena to provide a censorship resistant, scalable and stable form of digital money. And it's quite clear that a lot of people are really liking the idea of Athena because we can see on this Coindesk article that the price has risen 15% as Athena Labs increased their staking rewards recently. Now, if we look at the key points here, we can see that users who lock 50% or more of their ENA relative to their balance of USDE will receive a reward boost of 50%. Now, one problem that a lot of projects have, especially after doing an airdrop, is incentivizing those to keep their money locked up, to keep staking or whatever the requirement may be. But it seems like Athena are doing a very good job of that so far. And I think a big part of this is because of their user-friendly UI. Now, people who have been using DeFi products for a while will probably agree that this is very simple and straightforward. All it takes is to connect a wallet, you're gonna have your USDT balance in your Ethereum MetaMask wallet, whatever it may be, and you can quite simply swap that for USDE. Once you've done that, you'll be able to head to the staking page and you can simply swap your USDE to stake to USDE and that's pretty much it. That's the job done. Very, very straightforward UI and I do think this plays a big part in its recent success. So now we'll dive into the airdrop details and we're gonna start again on Cointelegraph here, looking at this headline where the largest Athena airdrop recipient gets nearly two million. So those who really put some skin in the game were rewarded quite generously and the total airdrop was worth around $450 million. So definitely one that was worth getting involved in. Now, if we have a look at the actual details and what it took to qualify, we can see on this article here that it was all around shard holders. Now, shard was basically what you would collect using Athena as part of their season one airdrop campaign. So if we scroll down, we can see that Athena announced their 750 million token airdrop, which was around 5% of the total supply. And like I said, season one was all around collecting shards. And the more that you stake, the more that you use the protocol, the more you will receive. Now, when it comes to season two, this is still active. This is what's running now, despite the token already launching. And we can basically see here on this article, I'll leave a link in the description, that in very simple terms, Athena's Sats campaign is a rebranding of its previous Shards campaign. And the Sats basically represent the onboarding of Bitcoin as a backing asset and the perpetual futures of BTC offer Athena an additional 25 billion of open interest to Delta to hedge which is a 2.5x uh, increase on the current size of their ETH perpetual futures so this is definitely a big development for Athena as a product and with that comes some new partnerships with MakerDAO and Morpho and Mantle as well. Now with the airdrop now coming to an end when it comes to the initial season one, it definitely loses a lot of interest to many people, but there is still an opportunity to farm some Athena tokens. And before we carry on, I just wanna say, if you are enjoying the video, please don't forget to drop a like. Do it right now because it will help me 
make content that you guys want to see. If you like this video, I can do more price predictions of other coins. Also comment and let me know which coins you want to see appear on the channel next. Now we're gonna take a look at the tokenomics and the vesting terms because this is very important when we're making those price predictions. So we're starting on CoinGecko and we can see that price currently at around 150 in a really nice uptrend since the launch of the token. And that leaves the market cap at around 2.1 billion with a fully diluted value of around 22.2 billion. So definitely a big player in the game. There's no doubt about that. And we've seen very similar numbers with other new projects that we've covered on the channel recently. So when it comes to that circulating supply, we've got around 9.5% of tokens in supply right now, which of course is very low, something we have to be careful with if we are holding this long term, but it isn't too much of a surprise with tokenomics of new projects these days. Now, if we move on to CryptoRank, our very reliable website for looking at vesting terms, we can see a breakdown of where the tokens actually are. So at the top, we've got the core contributors, which I'm assuming is the team at around 30%. We've got ecosystem developments with 25% of the token supply, investors also with 25%, the foundation with 15% and the airdrop caters for 5% as we recently mentioned. Now that is all well and good, nothing too concerning, it's quite, standard tokenomics for a lot of projects these days but the more important part for us as long-term investors is to pay attention to this vesting schedule so we can see immediately that the airdrop is unlocked on tge so that five percent is now in supply and people who rightfully receive the airdrop now have their tokens when it comes to core contributors and investors, they are locked up for one year, which is pretty standard practice with a linear unlock of three years. Now, to be honest, that's maybe on the short side, a lot of teams go for four or five years, but to be honest, with market cycles, with the length of the bull market and what we assume is left, I'm not really too concerned about that. It's more of a focus on this time next year, what will that do to the supply? Now, here you can see that we've got tokens untracked, which is the ecosystem development and the foundation. Now, that data isn't available right now, but I'm not overly concerned because it's the ecosystem development, it's the foundation. I'm pretty sure they'll be very sensible with them tokens. If there was no information on the team or the investors, then I'd be a little bit more concerned. But anyway, we can keep an eye on that as the information comes in. Now, when it actually comes to unlocks, we can see that immediately the first bit of information we have is April 2nd of next year. And that 9.5% of tokens in supply that we just discussed is basically going to double. So when we are making them price predictions, like we've said number, a number of times on the channel with other projects, that is going to play a big factor. And it's all about when you think this bull market may come to an end. So if you are following traditional four year cycles, you may be looking at Q2, Q3, maybe Q4 of next year. And we can see that the token supply at that point will run from around 18% all the way to around 28% by the time we get to December of 2025. So very similar to what we discussed recently with Wormhole, we're going to see that token supply go around two to three X over the next 12 to 18 months. And we will factor that in with the price predictions. And now we're gonna have a quick look at the competition in the DeFi space. Back to CoinGecko again. And to be honest, a lot of people know that the potential of DeFi as a sector, as a category, is huge and we've seen a huge burst for DeFi in 2020 when it really came onto the scene. But a lot of people are still bullish and think it can run way, way higher due to its natural use case. Now, when it comes to competition in the space, we can see that Athena is in ninth place already because of the size of that market cap. Now, when it comes to competition, all of these are their own 
DeFi products. We can look at Lido there. Now, Lido is at a market cap of around 32 billion right now. And we can see Uniswap just below, despite the recent antics of them getting sued, they still hold up at a market cap of around 8 billion, which is pretty impressive considering that it isn't the new shiny coin that it once was. But if we have a look at what it actually did, Back in 2021, we can see that the max market cap that it ever reached was at around 22 billion. So this can give us a little bit of an idea of how big the best uh, DeFi products can actually get to in a cycle. Of course, back then, uh, Uniswap was a new shiny project that a lot of people were using and paying attention to, a lot of airdrop receivers as well. But this time around, you would expect the new shiny DeFi products to actually go way beyond that, just based on the fact that if the total market cap is to surpass its previous high around 3 trillion, DeFi is going to take a good chunk of that. Okay, so now we get on to the price predictions, the bit that everybody has been waiting for. And as always in these videos, I will give a pessimistic, a realistic, and an optimistic price target. Now, what we have to remember is that when I'm doing these calculations, we do have to adjust the circulating supply because like we mentioned, it is going to be two to three times larger in 2025 and this is going to play a big part. So when we look at the pessimistic price target, I think that we could run to around the $6.10 mark. Now this would actually leave the market cap at around 20 billion, which to me would be a fail because we haven't eclipsed Uniswap of the last cycle and if this is to be as big as people make out, then it should be doing that with flying colors. If we wanna be realistic, I actually think we can double this. I think a $40 billion market cap for a project of this size with the height that it has around it is completely reasonable. We've seen a lot worse go a lot higher in the last cycle. Believe me, some of the stuff was quite bizarre, but this would leave price, of course, doubling that at around $12.20, and I think that is fair game. Now, if we want to be optimistic, I do think that the market cap could go as high as 65 billion, leaving price at around $19. Maybe we can even tap $20. Now, if you're super bullish on DeFi, if you've seen CZ's tweet when he announced his resignation from Binance, he was very focused on DeFi. And if you're going to follow suit there, then maybe you are super bullish on Athena and you think price can go as high as this. But I do think that is on the high side. I could be wrong if DeFi blows everybody's expectations out of the water this cycle, but I do think that the realistic target remains at around $12.20. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, comment and let me know how high you think Athena can go this cycle. Let me know if you agree with the price predictions that I just shared. But in the meantime, please don't forget to trade safe, invest safe, and I will catch you in the next one.